The planet has a permanent day side. It's facing the star because it's so close to, to the star, 20 times closer than the Earth is from the sun. That planet, Pro Proxima b, is facing the star with the same side. So there is a permanent... This bombshell data just killed the dream of Proxima b. This planet, once hyped as a potential Earth twin orbiting the nearest star to the sun, is a radioactive hellscape. Proxima Centauri, its host star, unleashed a flare detected by the Chandra X-ray Observatory so violent it makes the sun's most violent flares look feeble. Test satellite data confirms this wasn't a fluke. Proxima b is being continuously hammered by flares hundreds of times deadlier than anything Earth has endured. These aren't mere solar flares. They're extinction-level radiation storms. Avi Loeb, Harvard astrophysicist, drops the mic. This level of radiation makes Proxima b virtually uninhabitable. Perhaps the radio signal detected from Proxima yes, Centaur is that they detected it in a very narrow band of frequencies from the habitable zone, from a transmitter on the surface of Proxima b. This is yes. the planet that orbits Proxima Centauri. Then I calculated that the frequency would drift. The damage is beyond what we expected. Any hope of liquid water, atmosphere, or survival on this planet is gone. The cataclysmic flare that likely sealed Proxima b's fate wasn't just powerful, it was apocalyptic. Imagine a blast 100 times stronger than the 1859 Carrington event, which fried telegraph systems and lit skies on Earth with auroras as far south as Cuba. Now amplify that energy, accelerate ejected particles to near light speeds, and bombard a planet with no magnetic shield strong enough to deflect them. Proxima b, already vulnerable due to its tight orbit around a volatile red dwarf, stood no chance. The flare's X-ray and ultraviolet onslaught would have ionized the atmosphere within hours, stripping away protective gases and exposing the surface to lethal radiation. Oceans, if they ever existed, would have boiled into space, any nascent organic molecules reduced to ash. Even underground ecosystems, often cited as potential refugees on hostile worlds, would face sterilization as cosmic rays penetrated deep into the crust. The aftermath? A desolate rock, its surface temperature swings echoing Mercury's extremes, with dayside heat capable of melting lead and nightside cold plunging to near absolute zero. This isn't merely a hostile environment, it's a planetary tomb, its biosphere, if it ever existed, erased in a flash of stellar fury. NASA's confirmation of Proxima b's uninhabitability didn't rely on a single observation. Teams cross-referenced data from the Hubble Space Telescope and the Atacama Large Millimeter Array, ALMA, hunting for atmospheric fingerprints. The results were unequivocal, no detectable nitrogen, oxygen, or water vapor, the hallmarks of a life-sustaining atmosphere. Instead, the planet's spectral signals hinted at a bare, rocky surface exposed to the vacuum of space. Without atmospheric pressure, liquid water cannot persist, eliminating the possibility of Earth-like hydrology. Temperature models further dashed hopes, showing swings between 300 degrees Fahrenheit scorch and negative 328 degrees Fahrenheit deep freeze depending on orbital phase. Even Mars, with its thin atmosphere, seems hospitable by comparison. Avi Loeb's analysis cuts to the core. The data suggest Proxima b isn't just hostile to life, it's completely barren. This conclusion isn't speculative. It's rooted in the absence of atmospheric buffers and the constant radiation drizzle from Proxima Centauri's frequent flares. The planet's fate serves as a cautionary tale about the fragility of habitable zones around red dwarfs, stars that dominate the galaxy but may be inherently incompatible with life as we know it. The discovery's ripple effect extends far beyond Proxima b, challenging the assumption that red dwarf systems are promising targets for astrobiology. These dim, long-lived stars make up 75% of the Milky Way's stellar population, and their planets, like those in the TRAPPIST-1 system, were once prioritized in the search for life. But NASA's findings suggest a paradigm shift. Red Dwarf's turbulent youth, marked by billion-year phases of extreme flaring, may sterilize nearby planets before atmospheres stabilize. Even older, quieter Red Dwarfs emit radiation in the far ultraviolet and X-ray spectra, eroding planetary defenses over eons. 
Consequently, agencies are pivoting toward G-type stars like our Sun and their wider Goldilocks zones, where worlds might avoid such extremes. The James Webb Space Telescope's revised observation lists now favor systems like Kepler 452, orbiting a Sun-like star 1,400 light years away. This strategic realignment acknowledges a hard truth. While red dwarf planets are abundant, their habitability may be a cosmic mirage. As Avi Loeb warns, we've spent years looking at the wrong places, underscoring the need to redirect resources toward more promising, if less numerous, stellar targets. Could any form of life endure Proxima B's hellish conditions? Earth's extremophiles, microbes thriving in nuclear reactors or acidic hot springs, push the boundaries of survivability, but even they require stable chemical environments. Proxima B's surface, bombarded by ionizing radiation and solar winds, offers no such refuge. Subsurface oceans, hypothesized to exist beneath icy crusts on moons like Europa, might theoretically persist, but without a magnetic field or atmosphere, constant stellar eruptions would hinder the complex chemistry necessary for life. Moreover, the planet's probable tidal locking, with one face permanently scorched and the other frozen, creates a narrow terminator line of marginal habitability, where temperature gradients could theoretically allow liquid water. But even this sliver of hope fades under the relentless particle storms, which would disrupt any emerging ecosystems. NASA and SETI haven't abandoned Proxima b entirely. Its proximity makes it a convenient testbed for studying stellar planetary interactions. But the search for biosignatures has decisively shifted elsewhere. The verdict is clear. Proxima b isn't a second Earth awaiting discovery, but a stark lesson in cosmic harshness. This revelation forces a reckoning in astrobiology and interstellar exploration. If the nearest exoplanet is a radiation-blasted wasteland, what does that mean for the billions of red dwarf planets across the galaxy? Should we abandon them in favor of rarer, sun-like stars, or develop new technologies to probe their extreme environments? The debate is urgent. Missions like Breakthrough Starshot, which envision sending nanoprobes to Proxima b, now face existential questions. What's the value of exploring a dead world? Yet, understanding Proxima b's destruction could unlock secrets about planetary evolution and the limits of life. Meanwhile, NASA's upcoming Habitable Worlds Observatory will prioritize stars less tempestuous than Proxima Centauri, scanning for ozone and methane in distant atmospheres. The challenge is balancing scientific curiosity with pragmatic resource allocation. As the public grapples with these cosmic stakes, one truth emerges. Space exploration is as much about redefining our priorities as it is about discovering new worlds. Proxima B's story isn't just a tragedy. It's a catalyst for sharper questions, better tools, and a deeper appreciation for the fragile miracle of our own pale blue dot. NASA's grim verdict on Proxima B hasn't silenced everyone. A vocal faction of scientists, rogue researchers, and sci-fi-fueled dreamers are pushing back with radical theories that defy the agency's conclusions. Their argument boils down to a single defiant question. What if life on Proxima b isn't life as we know it? Earth's extremophiles, organisms thriving in boiling hydrothermal vents, acidic pools, or even Chernobyl's radioactive ruins, prove biology can adapt to hellish conditions. But what about environments so alien they rewrite the rules of existence itself? Proxima b's relentless radiation baths and airless surface might not host DNA-based life, but some propose shadow biospheres built on entirely different chemistries. Imagine microbes that metabolize X-rays instead of oxygen, using the star's deadly flares as an energy source. Or silicon-based organisms with crystalline structures resistant to ionizing particles, their cellular machinery hardened against stellar bombardment. These aren't just thought experiments. Researchers at the University of Aberdeen recently modeled radiotrophic life forms akin to Deinococcus radiodurans, Earth's radiation-eating bacteria, but scaled to survive Proxima b's 10,000 times harsher environment. Their simulations suggest such organisms could repair DNA damage in real time, turning the planet's greatest threat into a survival tool. Then there's the quantum angle. A fringe group at MIT's Alternative Life Lab 
argues that Proxima B's extreme conditions might favor life operating on quantum coherence principles, where organisms exploit entanglement to share energy or information across vast distances. Picture a planetary-scale network of microbial nodes communicating via quantum vibrations, bypassing the need for a protective atmosphere entirely. It sounds like science fiction, but experiments with photosynthetic algae already show quantum effects enhancing energy transfer efficiency. On Proxima b, where UV radiation bombards the surface with particle energies far beyond Earth norms, such quantum life might not just survive, it could thrive, evolving mechanisms to harvest stellar fury as a power source. Even the planet's tidal locking, once seen as a death sentence, gets flipped into an asset here. The permanent day-night divide could create stable energy gradients for organisms straddling the Terminator line, where scorching heat meets eternal frost. But the wildest theories abandon biology altogether. Oxford's Future of Humanity Institute has floated the idea of Proxima B hosting synthetic life, self-replicating AI systems forged from metallic alloys or superconductors immune to radiation. These machines, they argue, could have evolved from tech dumped by a long-dead civilization or arisen naturally from rare chemical reactions in the planet's magma chambers. NASA's own Weird Life Task Force is quietly investigating similar possibilities, studying how non-carbon-based systems might achieve complexity in extreme environments. Their 2023 paper in Astrobiology speculates about lava life in Proxima B's hypothesized subsurface oceans, where molten rock acts as a solvent for iron-sulfur molecular chains. It's a stretch, but the math checks out. Thermodynamic models show such systems could theoretically replicate Earth-like energy cycles, albeit at 1,500 degrees Fahrenheit. Mainstream scientists dismiss these ideas as wishful thinking. You can't just hand-wave away the laws of physics, snaps astrobiologist Sarah Seeger. No known mechanism lets life, organic or otherwise, function without some protection from stellar winds. Even Earth's toughest extremophiles require liquid water and minimal radiation shielding, conditions Proxima b utterly lacks. Critics also point to the Fermi paradox. If weird life is common, why haven't we detected any signatures? Yet the dissenters counter with history's lessons, from the dismissal of continental drift to the once laughable idea of bacteria surviving space. NASA's own discovery of arsenic-based bacteria in Mono Lake in 2010, though later disputed, proved the agency is open to redefining life's boundaries. Now, private initiatives like the Breakthrough Listen Project are scanning Proxima B for techno-signatures. Not just radio waves, but laser pulses or neutrino patterns suggesting artificiality. The most provocative theory? Proxima B's sterilization might be recent. If a Carrington-level flare hit Earth tomorrow, it would devastate our infrastructure, but leave microbes intact. What if Proxima B's biosphere, adapted to frequent flares, was caught in a recovery phase when Chandra observed it? Teams at the SETI Institute are developing algorithms to detect post-apocalyptic biosignatures, like methane spikes from the underground archaea colonies rebuilding post-flare. Others hunt for zombie molecules like perchlorates, which can preserve organic material in stasis for millennia. None of this guarantees life, but it fuels a broader philosophical revolt. If we declare Proxima B dead after a single snapshot in cosmic time, are we succumbing to a failure of imagination? The planet's story isn't over. It's a laboratory for testing the universe's creativity. Whether the answer is microbes, machines, or something beyond our comprehension, Proxima B's greatest lesson might be that life, in whatever form, refuses to play by our rules. NASA's abrupt pivot from Proxima B isn't just a course correction, it's a full-scale revolution in the hunt for alien life. With the closest exoplanet now deemed a radioactive wasteland, the agency is redirecting billions of dollars and decades of research toward star systems once considered second-tier targets. At the top of the list, Kepler 452, a sun-like star 1,400 light-years away, hosting a planet dubbed Earth's cousin. Unlike Proxima Centauri's violent red dwarf, Kepler 452 is a G-type star nearly identical to our sun burning steady and stable for over six billion years. 
Its planet, Kepler-452b, orbits squarely in the habitable zone, with a year 385 days long, a near-perfect analog to Earth's conditions. But the real kicker? Data from the Kepler Space Telescope suggests it's likely rocky, with enough gravity to hold an atmosphere. James Webb's recent spectral analyses have already detected traces of water vapor and carbon dioxide in its skies, chemicals that could signal active geology or even biology. For NASA, this system has become the new poster child for alien life, a gamble that sun-like stars are the only viable hosts for complex ecosystems. But Kepler-452b isn't alone. Tau Tseti, a star just 12 light years away, is now under intense scrutiny. Though slightly smaller and cooler than the Sun, it's surrounded by four planets in the habitable zone, two of which, Tau Ceti E and F, show tantalizing signs of temperate climates. Recent ALMA radio observations detected dust belts around the star, hinting at asteroid collisions that could deliver water and organic molecules to these worlds. The catch? Tau Ceti's planets are likely tidally locked, with one side perpetually scorched and the other frozen. Yet NASA's models suggest their terminator zones, the twilight bands between day and night, might maintain liquid water if atmospheres are thick enough. It's a long shot, but worth billions in telescope time compared to Proxima b's confirmed sterility. Then, there's Luton's star, a red dwarf without the death wish. Unlike Proxima Centauri, this star has entered a rare, quiet phase, with flares 1,000 times weaker than average for its class. Its planet, GJ273b, orbits in the habitable zone and is now the subject of a controversial Medi experiment where scientists blasted encoded messages toward it in 2017. While some call it reckless, NASA sees it as a strategic test. If GJ273b replies, it could prove that some red dwarfs permit life to evolve during lulls in stellar fury. The true game changer, though, is NASA's stealth shift toward K-type orange dwarfs. These stars, slightly cooler than the sun but hotter than red dwarfs, are emerging as astrophysics' new darling. They burn for 15 to 30 billion years, three times longer than the sun, giving life eons to emerge, and their habitable zones are wider and more stable. Enter the JWST's new obsession, Kepler-442, a K-star 1,200 light-years away, with a planet receiving 70% of Earth's sunlight. Early atmospheric scans show oxygen spikes that don't align with known abiotic processes, sparking whispers of potential photosynthesis. But confirming this requires NASA's next-gen Habitable Worlds Observatory, a $10 billion space telescope slated for the 2040s, designed to image exoplanets directly and sniff out biosignatures like methane and ozone. Until then, the JWST is running triage, prioritizing K-type systems over G and M stars, a quiet admission that our solar system setup might not be the universe's default. Yet distance remains a brutal obstacle. While Proxima b is practically next door at four light years, these promising worlds are hundreds to thousands of times farther away. Sending probes is impossible with current tech, and even the Breakthrough Starshot Initiative's laser-powered nanocraft, theoretically capable of reaching 20% light speed, would take centuries to reach Tau Ceti. For now, NASA's strategy is purely observational, perfecting atmospheric spectroscopy, refining climate models, and praying the JWST survives its orbital ballet long enough to deliver breakthroughs. But the stakes are cosmic. If none of these targets pan out, it could mean humanity is utterly alone, or that life requires conditions so bizarre we haven't even imagined them yet. Either way, Proxima B's demise didn't kill the search for aliens. It forced NASA to stop chasing convenience and start confronting the universe's harsh realities. The message is clear, if we want to find life, we'll need to look deeper, think stranger, and accept that Earth might be a fluke in a galaxy of dead worlds.